May I now invite to the podium a diplomat, Mr. Brian Schott, who is the cultural attaché at the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to join you today. Mr. Minister, thank you so much uh, for your presence here, for making this possible. Mr. Deputy Minister, likewise. Uh, friends, guests, colleagues, organizers, uh, I think this is an excellent opportunity to discuss a lot of the shared interests we have in the future of uh, higher education in Iraq uh, and what we can do together to move it forward. Um, as you see, I titled my slide, uh, Building Academic Infrastructure. That's what they asked me to talk about. Um, but I confess that I don't really know anything about buildings and I don't know very much about computers and I don't know much about telephone systems and whatnot. Um, but what, I, what I've tried to indicate with this slide, I think the key to, uh, to academic infrastructure is the human resources. So what I really wanted to talk about today um, was some of the things that the U.S. Uh, and Iraq have done together to, to try to develop those resources, some of the things that we're still doing and some of the things that we'll hope to continue uh, to do in the future. You see in this, uh, in this fresco, it's not a particularly good picture, but at the center there are uh, supposed to be Plato and Aristotle, the two icons, if you will, of, uh, of academic learning. Uh, and this is what academic learning and academic infrastructure is all about, uh, bringing the people together to talk about ideas, uh, to exchange knowledge, to create new forms of knowledge, and to figure out new ways of engaging the world today. Uh, so that's what I think we're. Uh, I think that's what I think we're all about, and uh, and that's what I wanted to uh, wanted to address today. I wanted to start uh, by talking about something that's probably very familiar to most of you. Uh, it's the Fulbright Foreign Student Program. Uh, the Fulbright Program was established by a uh, uh, an act of Congress in 1946. Um, and the program is designed to facilitate the exchange of U.S. Uh, students and students abroad. Uh, one component, uh, it's got many facets, but one component is, again, the student program. Uh, when it was reestablished here uh, in Iraq in 2004, uh, there have been nearly 300 Fulbrighters uh, who have traveled to the United States um, uh, to, uh, to take advantage of uh, graduate student programs. Uh, in a variety of fields. It's open to all disciplines and all academic fields with the exception of, of uh, clinical studies uh, such as in medicine uh, uh, or clinical veterinary studies. Uh, I've put some statistics up here to try to give some indication of uh, the balance uh, both in terms of gender and in terms of distribution uh, around the country. Uh, we think it's important uh, uh, to try to engage uh, broad segments of Iraqi society and I must say uh, as our recruitment gets underway for the 2013-2015 year, I have every reason to believe uh, that the response uh, and that the number of, uh, of well-qualified uh, Iraqi uh, graduates interested in studying in the United States is going to continue to grow. Uh, another component to the Fulbright program is the uh, Fulbright Visiting Scholar Program. Uh, you can see here a little bit of information about what it gives uh, visiting scholars the oppor opportunity to do. This is unique to Iraq. This is a program uh, that uh, uh, we at the embassy developed to try to give opportunities to emerging young faculty, uh, uh, newly minted PhDs in their field to engage with U.S. Uh, colleagues. Um, for short terms, uh, generally over the summer, uh, they take about six or eight weeks, travel to a host university in the United States uh, in particular fields. Uh, this program has been active for two years. Uh, it started in 2010 uh, with a group of uh, 25. Uh, up to now, there have been about 110. Uh, and in fact, uh, I just, uh, we've just finished interviewing and recruiting for the next group who, uh, who we hope will be able to travel this summer. And we're looking forward to, uh, to about 30 participants. Uh, in the program. We try to structure this in terms of cohorts. In other words, we try to take groups of Iraqi uh, specialists and scholars and let them uh, engage with groups of uh, U.S. specialists and scholars in certain fields. Um, we have had and we will continue to have cohorts in science, technology, engineering, uh, teaching English as a foreign language, linguistics. Uh, we even had one in American literature uh, one time. Um, this is an exchange program. The idea is that 
uh, Iraqis traveling to the United States take a little bit of Iraq with them. They're ambassadors, if you will, uh, of Iraqi uh, uh, science and culture uh, and uh, society, and they learn a little bit about the United States. We learn from uh, uh, we learn from the Iraqis, uh, and we hope uh, that uh, uh, we can share a little bit about uh, about America with them uh, when they uh, when they travel. Um, the other program I want to mention, we've heard a little bit about this this morning. Uh, we had a question from, uh, from one of the University of Linkage's program implementers. Uh, I know some of the representatives of some of the universities are here uh, today. I won't read through the list of them, but basically over the course of uh, the last three years, it has uh, engaged seven U.S. universities and seven Iraqi universities uh, in various fields. Uh, computer science, English, accounting, finance. Uh, we've had one of the linkages addresses civil engineering, the linkage with Basra and Oklahoma State focuses on petroleum science, computer science. Uh, uh, Salah Hadeen uh, in Erbil focuses on economics, English and banking, and so on. University of Technology in Baghdad works with the uh, University of Missouri in industrial engineering, renewable energy, uh, nanotechnology, uh, and what have you. Uh, the goal here uh, is to give, again, groups of scholars uh, uh, in both countries uh, the opportunity to engage, to help uh, update curricula in these specific fields, uh, develop career centers so that when the program wraps up, uh, there will be a uh, tangible uh, result that gives graduating uh, Iraqis the opportunity to engage with potential employers. Uh, there's been some digital video conferencing uh, classroom uh, activity to try to, uh, to try to have guest lectures by digital video conference. I think we'll hear a little bit more about that later today. Uh, try to develop, uh, begin developing courses, uh, and there's been exchange of scholars uh, and faculty between, uh, between Iraq uh, and the United States, uh, including uh, administrators. And the goal, again, is to bring the universities together as these centers of learning uh, and as ways to, uh, uh, to advance common goals uh, and uh, develop uh, in, a, uh, in a global uh, educational system. Uh, I want to mention another thing, too. Um, we have, uh, and this slide speaks to uh, Department of State-wide, uh, uh, worldwide program uh, in educational advising. Um, at the risk of uh, uh, at, at the risk of sounding uh, a bit uh, conceited, but we in, we uh, in the United States think our university system is one of the best in the world, uh, if not the best in the world, uh, and we want to share that with people. Um, and one of the ways we do that. Uh, is through educational advisors uh, who work uh, with foreign students interested in traveling and studying in the United States and who work with U.S. students interested in studying uh, abroad, uh, particular to Iraq. Uh, in fact, uh, in Baghdad, I have a colleague uh, at the embassy, and, and she's one of just two in the world, uh, a foreign service officer who's devoted uh, to serving as an educational advisor for Iraqi students. We have an, uh, uh, an Iraqi staff working in Erbil doing the same thing. Uh, we hope to bring on board an Iraqi staff in Baghdad uh, uh, to similarly work with Iraqis interested in finding the best university for them in the United States. Uh, we also maintain a network of, of uh, some 60 volunteers. These are, these are Iraqi students and faculty who help their fellow uh, students and, and uh, uh, colleagues uh, uh, get together, learn more about higher education in the United States, learn more about what universities could best fill their, uh, their needs, uh, and helping them uh, uh, with the process of uh, researching universities, writing the applications, uh, and whatnot, because a lot of it is all very new. Um, I will say um, uh, that in 2011-2012, uh, 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 the statistics that this Education USA organization compiles showed that there were 809 Iraqis studying in the United States at one level. Most of these are graduate students. Uh, most of them are in, uh, in some of the fields we've heard about, engineering, uh, technical fields, architecture, for example, computer science. Uh, but what's important, I think, to note here is that that's a 31% increase over the number of students who uh, were documented studying in the United States in 2010-2011. Uh, we hope these numbers continue to go up. Uh, to increase. Um, Minister Adib has, uh, has stated uh, the goal of, of, of many of the Iraqi scholarship uh, student recipients traveling to the United States 
Uh, I can say that's a goal that we share. Uh, like I said, uh, it's an opportunity for us to learn from, sorry about that, it's an opportunity for us to learn from, uh, from Iraqis, and it's an opportunity to share some of uh, what our university system has to offer. Um, the, uh, I, I have a, a, a brief slide here, um, and this will be familiar to many of you. I, I took it um, uh, from the uh, Iraq Scholarship Program, a book that published by the, the office in Washington, uh, outlining the priorities for 2012 and 2013. Uh, I didn't list all of them. The full list, uh, uh, I think, runs to uh, about seven pages of subspecialties. But these are the, these are the top fields that the scholarship uh, programs have been interested in. You can see uh, what are known as the STEM field, science, technology, engineering, uh, and mathematics. Uh, as I just mentioned, many of those fields match up with the fields that our university linkages program have been working on. Um, uh, as far as the Fulbright scholars and students is, uh, is concerned, many of those, in fact, uh, by my count, in the last three years of about 130 uh, Fulbright uh, scholars or students, uh, more than two-thirds, uh, nearly two-thirds, I guess, about 80 have been in one of these fields. Uh, so the numbers, so it overlaps, the opportunities there overlap. Uh, I've noted in here that this wasn't on the, on the, uh, on the uh, original document, uh, future priorities. Um, I'm, an, I'm an anthropologist. My background is in social sciences and humanities. And uh, uh, we see here law. We heard earlier uh, Dr. Siraj talk about some of the, uh, some of the fields in law and, and developing that. And I would encourage these, uh, uh, these fields. I would encourage fields in social sciences. I would encourage the humanities. These obviously are the, 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 uh, some of the other fields that develop the critical thinking uh, skills that are necessary, obviously, for, uh, for any country uh, to continue uh, engaging uh, in the world uh, as Iraq is doing. Um, this is how uh, one of the ways uh, that uh, students learn to write and read and, uh, uh, and communicate and articulate and develop the plans and ideas and strategies that, uh, uh, that all countries need to go forward. Uh, there are some challenges uh, to studying in the United States, and there's some challenges both to getting there and then, and then once they're there. Um, I think probably foremost of all is the, is the intense decentralization of the U.S. higher education system. Uh, I've noted here there are about 4,500 colleges, universities, and institutes of higher education. Finding for, for students to find their way through that is uh, a very, very challenging uh, endeavor. This is one of the things our, uh, our educational advisors uh, help them do. Um, also, the, uh, the, uh, the admission criteria uh, is, another, uh, is another challenge. There are often uh, uh, standardized tests required. Um, one of the things that we've been doing to try to, uh, uh, to, try to address this challenge, again, uh, working with our educational advisors. Uh, we've started a program with, uh, with ministry uh, officials uh, to give them uh, more insight and understanding uh, into the U.S. system so that they uh, can then uh, work with their, uh, with their scholarship students and getting students placed uh, uh, appropriately in the U.S. It takes a long time. We recognize that. Uh, it sometimes takes as much as 12 months for an admission. Um, uh, but we have, uh, as you'll see a little bit later, we have colleagues in the United States, too, who are working on uh, these issues uh, to try to help, uh, uh, to try to help uh, get more Iraqis uh, into the U.S. to take advantage uh, uh, of this and to facilitate that exchange. We heard earlier, too, uh, the importance of English language. Uh, I listed here just a couple of the, of the things that, uh, uh, that the embassy has been able to help support. Uh, we'll probably hear a little bit more later about the Ball State English Language Institute in collaboration with the Higher Committee for Educational Development. Uh, we're preparing, uh, we've opened recruiting, in fact, for, uh, for graduate students uh, to travel to ASU, uh, Arizona State University, for an intensive English language teaching program. Uh, the goal being that we can't possibly teach all the Iraqis who want to learn English English, but Iraqis can. We can build the capacity of Iraqi organizations and faculty uh, to do that. And last, I'd mention there's this challenge. Uh, we call it an anthropology culture shock. Uh, just the sheer challenge of living and working and studying in a foreign culture and in a foreign environment. Um, uh, 
It's important to have somebody when students get there, when students arrive, somebody they can turn to, somebody they can talk to, uh, whether it's at the off, whether it's at the university, or whether it's uh, uh, through the uh, cultural attaché, uh, or whether it's through another support structure, but a support structure that's dedicated to supporting the students when they're in the United States, because we want them to see to succeed as much as uh, as they want to succeed, and as much as much as the government of Iraq wants them to succeed. Um, and uh, uh, last, I would just note a couple of things. Um, none of these projects are uh, are uh, are over. We're continuing to engage uh, with the Iraqi government in a lot of, in many ways. Um, at the strategic level, I'll thank again Minister Adib for the Joint Coordination Committee on Educational and Cultural Cooperation. Uh, uh, he and his colleagues so graciously hosted uh, in December. What this is, is this is an opportunity uh, for U.S. government officials and Iraqi government officials to sit down, talk about uh, uh, shared interests and shared priorities in mapping the way forward. We're grateful that this has been going on. We look forward to it continuing. <laughs> Um, I'd also mention uh, another program, the International Visitors Leadership Program. Some of you may have heard of it. This is another uh, worldwide uh, program uh, that takes from, uh, from Iraq uh, more than 100 uh, mid-career professionals uh, every year. It's not a study program, but it's more an opportunity for people to meet and be introduced to and learn more about their colleagues and their colleagues' work in the United States. Uh, we've done programs in the past. Uh, on uh, admissions processes, on advising. Uh, we're hopeful that we can put, uh, put one together on uh, some of the accreditation and evaluation issues we heard about uh, uh, earlier today and that will be a part of the conversations the, the, the rest of today and tomorrow. Um, I'll mention just briefly that, uh, that the Department of State has engaged uh, Dr. Surya Chalapali. We'll hear from him, uh, I believe, tomorrow. He'll talk a little bit more about uh, about uh, some of the scientific research uh, uh, ideas that we have about how we can bring Iraq and U.S. Uh, scientific research communities uh, together. He's here with us, and we'll hear more from him. Um, we also have engaged uh, an education specialist for Iraq. This is another unique position. Um, based in Washington, her role is to engage with U.S. institutions to help support uh, Iraq's higher education goals, and this goes right to uh, some of the engagement we heard about with scholarship uh, students, uh, finding universities to host them, helping link universities uh, together. Uh, and last, I'd like to uh, just come back to the university's linkages program and mention the Careers Center and what we hope is the imminent launch of what will be a jobs website, uh, a website where university graduates can go and post their CVs and post their, uh, post their interests and companies, whether they're government, non-governmental, private, commercial, what have you, uh, can find them and can help recruit employer, uh, employees. The idea here, as the minister mentioned, is to tie higher education to private industry together uh, for the good and for the future of Iraq and its people. Um, and with that, I'll stop. And thank you.